how she traveled. And our women who made a difference. A cool kids gift to our community. Justice Located, June Chomi, as portrayed by Isaiah. An overwhelming opportunity was presented to me. The opportunity to travel overseas as a missionary nurse in South Africa. This was not only an honor, but also a chance. This was an opening for me to learn from a culture unsimilar to mine. So I accepted the chance, thankfully, and looked forward to South Africa upon arriving. This was like a dream for me. I had wanted to be a nurse ever since I was a young child, and my first dream was granted. Getting to know the Africans and achieving knowledge about their everyday life was the most overpowering experience for me. One activity I was always a part of was worshiping with them on Sundays. It was a delight because they had the most radiant singing voices, but all life for the Africans, unfortunately, wasn't as beautiful as their voices. See, they were living under the legalized apartheid system, which meant that racism was basically permissible. It was amazing to me that with all this sorrow, they still beamed with happiness and laughed as if nothing seemed wrong. The Africans taught me the great life lesson of patience and learning to accept people even if they aren't that considerate or admirable to you. And obviously, those are the kind of people that had to put up with every day. This was an unfamiliar and new experience to me, racism and all, because back home, I lived in the North, and I never experienced such a thing. I mean, this was something I've read about, but nothing that I've witnessed firsthand. Despite what every white around me thought, I had the Africans over to my house for tea. The whites looked down upon me for that, because they looked at it as giving the Africans a sense of equality, which was something I wanted to give them and help them realize that it could actually happen. The whites wouldn't even come over for tea because blacks might have drunk from the cups. I found that totally and utterly ridiculous. What was even worse is that the women there were treated like second-class citizens, so being black and a woman is like a double whammy. Being in Africa made an activist and a feminist out of me. An activist by seeing the legalized racism and a feminist because of the increasingly dreadful treatment of women. When I returned home, I ended up moving to the cross, and that's where I began advocating and volunteering for justice. The first and one of utmost important causes I took on was an anti-apartheid struggle, which was indeed a worldwide movement. Freedom didn't just appear in South Africa. We productively struggled, succeeded, trudged forward and worked all over the world and brought freedom to the Africans. The Africans also fought and brought it amongst themselves. Freedom wasn't reached in Namibia until 1990, in South Africa until 1994. It took forever and a day, but I stuck with it. My dad was always one of the people who supported those whom he called the underdog, or someone who might not have a voice. And that's something I always kept in mind as I continue on with my advocacy. Due to that lifelong lesson from my father, I assigned myself to and took on many issues of concern in my own community, like homelessness, domestic violence, low-income housing, anti-death penalty, and homosexual issues. I participated in the formation of many different organizations to improve the life of citizens in the Cooley region, like PFLAG, Parents, Families, and Friends of Lesbians and Gays, Habitat for Humanity, which since 1992, we have built 22 houses and gotten 150 people off of the streets and in homes. I was also involved in the YWCA, New Horizons, and the League of Women Voters, just to name a few. I am 86 years old and my eyesight is deteriorating. I can't even drive. Despite this, I still have a clear vision of what I want, and that is equality for all people. I know. Injustices in our world will continue to decrease as more people jump on the bandwagon to help. It is one thing to talk about helping injustice and another thing to act. I've acted. I've acted. This podcast brought to you from La Crosse, Wisconsin by the Cooley Kids at Longfellow Middle School in conjunction with the League of Women Voters.